Well, hello, everybody. Dr. Flynn here. So excited for the amazing presenter that we have right now. Um, guys, I, I got an amazing program tonight. Uh, I know we're going to have lots of people listening to this, and I want you guys to understand that uh, the guy that I'm going to introduce you to, um, he's a young guy. He's inspirational. He's motivational. He's just got the most amazing programs. A young doc that I've looked into this program, and when I started searching it from uh, some of the docs that I know quite well, they're like, you guys got to get to know Tabor Smith's uh, uh, program. And I'm like, I started looking into it, started talking a little bit, guys, and next thing I know, he's got the most unbelievable program for chiropractors that way. And I'm so excited and, and so blessed that you're on here today, Dr. Tabor. So first of all, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate you allowing me to speak about something I'm really passionate about. Excellent. Now, what I'm going to do, guys, I said I want to get right into his program. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump off the mic here and stuff like that because I'm, I'm excited to learn from this guy. I'm excited to see what he has to present to everybody tonight. I know his stuff is top-notch. Also, too, guys, one thing is all you guys that, uh, that follow us through Wellness Enterprises, what I want you to do is understand that we've got a great seminar coming up in October, and Dr. Tabor has an amazing seminar coming up in September at the end of this month that I endorse. I endorse. I tell every one of you doctors out there, I think you guys should go. Um, he's going to talk about the GPS Summit tonight. And stuff like that. So, uh, Dr. Tabor, take it away, and uh, I'm excited to learn from you tonight. Absolutely. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And I'll just get right into spinal hygiene. Uh, it's a subject that I am extremely passionate about. I have been since I was about 16 years old, and I started having just debilitating back issues. And, and uh, I started seeing a chiropractor, it completely changed my life. And, uh, you know, back then I didn't know it was called spinal hygiene, but I just innately knew that it would be a good thing to exercise my back and to keep healthy, strong uh, muscles on my spine. And, and so I continued to do that. Even, you know, I went to chiropractic school and I really learned uh, the basis and the importance of, of spinal care. And, and that's where I took, you know, what I was already doing and, and I took what I learned in chiropractic school and I mended that together and I'm able to show my patients uh, how to really take care of their spine and to, and to educate their entire family how they can, as a family, take care of their spine and practice proper spinal hygiene for a lifetime. And I want to share that with you guys tonight. I'm going to talk about a few things. I'm going to talk about what spinal hygiene really is. I want to share with you how it's going to explode your practice and not only that, but how it can it just take chiropractic to the next level. I, I, my passion is that chiropractic be someday as large as dentistry. And I really think that Educating our patients about spinal hygiene or lifetime spinal care is how that can actually happen. I'm also going to show you how you can implement it in your office and some very easy, very specific exercises that I share with my patients, and I'll show you how to do them and how to share them with your patients. So what I want to do is just get right into this question of what is spinal hygiene, right? Well, spinal hygiene, and this is my definition, but it's the set of practices associated with the preservation of the spine or maintaining the health of the spine. So this definitely, in my opinion, includes regular chiropractic adjustments. You know, this concept of hygiene, it, well, it's been very successful, obviously, in the dental profession in the form of dental hygiene or, or oral hygiene. And they share this with their patients all the time. But what you might not know about the history of that is that we didn't always take great care of our teeth. In fact, the father of dental hygiene, as they call him, Dr. Alfred Phones, was a dentist back in the early 1900s, and, and nobody took care of their teeth back then. In fact, he was pulling so many rotten teeth in his office that he just became determined that he was going to do something about it, and he was going to help people with hygiene um, of their mouth. Now, he became convinced that uh, tooth decay or degeneration of the teeth could be prevented if you practice proper oral hygiene, if you took care of your teeth. And this was a relatively new concept in dentistry. And in fact, just a, a few years before that, they discovered that uh, food buildup in the teeth caused bacteria that ate that food to release an acid that caused breakdown of, of your teeth or it caused tooth decay over time. And here's the reason why I tell you all of this about dentistry is that proper hygiene or upkeep is what I like to call it. It prevents de degeneration. It doesn't matter where you use this. You could use it on your car. Proper upkeep of your car prevents degeneration of your car. Proper upkeep of your house 
prevents degeneration of your house, right? So we see this to be true in every area of our body. You can see here, if you're looking at with me, looking at these pictures with me, the picture on the left is someone who has kept their teeth in great condition. They pre they've practiced great dental hygiene. They have very pretty teeth. You can see the person on the right there has not been taking care of his teeth at all. He's not been, pra been practicing very good dental hygiene at all. And so we extrapolate that to other areas of the body. You can see the picture on the left here is my good friend Dr. Weinstein, and he's kept great care of his body. He's in great shape. Um, you know, he's, he's very fit. He's very healthy. And he had to put in a lot of energy, a lot of time, and a lot of effort to maintain that. But that's proper upkeep of the body. You can see the picture on the right. This person obviously hasn't put in the energy or the time to maintaining his body. And we know that our body will degenerate, uh, will become overweight, will become sick, will, our body will break down if we don't keep proper care of our body. So, um, you know, this is not an uncommon scenario that we're taking and we're, we're extrapolating and we're moving to other areas of the body. So that's why I want to share with you the health and proper upkeep of the spine. If you're looking at... Uh, there you go. If you're looking at these pictures with me and you're a chiropractor, you're obviously going to know we're looking at a lateral cervical neutral of uh, the cervical spine here. The picture on the left, the x-ray on the left, is someone who's been taking proper care of their spine. You can see that their spine is in great alignment. They've got a, a nice cervical curve. You can see the disc spaces between each disc is nice and it's healthy. That nervous system's able to flourish. It's, the brain's able to communicate with the body. And unfortunately, I know it's a huge drastic change, but this x-ray on the right here, that's the worst x-ray I've ever seen. That's why I used it. And this gentleman obviously has not been practicing uh, proper spinal hygiene. You can see he has a negative 20 degree curve, breakdown of the discs, complete fusion uh, in some areas of the spine. There was so much pressure on his spinal cord from the degeneration in the spine, they actually had to do surgery and wrap wire around his his vertebrae and, and there was so much pressure on the wire the wire actually broke in a few places and if you don't understand the difference between you know taking care of the spine and not taking care of your spine from the difference between these two pictures then I don't know how else to, to uh, show you or to share it with you so these concepts of hygiene well they're just self-evident everybody understands this we don't have to spend millions and millions of dollars on scientific studies to show whether taking care of something will make it last longer that would be ridiculous if scientists went out and they started spending millions of dollars to try to decide whether brushing your teeth was healthy for you, right? We know that brushing your teeth is healthy for you. We know that proper upkeep or taking care of something is healthy for it and will make it last longer. The only difference is that the public doesn't know this. There's no public awareness when it comes to spinal hygiene. This is our challenge, ladies and gentlemen, chiropractors. This is our challenge. Oral hygiene has a huge public awareness, and dentists have done a great job of sharing this information with the public. Spinal hygiene doesn't. In fact, statistics show that 94% of, of Americans say they brush their teeth regularly. 94%. That huge awareness of dental health leads to half the people, 50% of the people in the United States, visit a dentist regularly. And you might not think that's a, that's a very big number, but it actually is. That's over 150 million people that visit the dentist regularly. Now, let me ask you kind of a funny question here. Why do you think dentists give away free toothbrushes in their office? Why do you think dentists teach people how to brush their teeth? They teach people how to floss. It's certainly not directly making them money. I don't know any dentist in the world, really, who makes their money in their office by selling toothbrushes. Do you? I don't know any dentist that makes their money selling floss, but yet they continue to teach people how to brush, teach people how to floss, because it places them as, as the expert in dental hygiene. And it also builds awareness in the public that they need to start taking care of their teeth, and they need to keep coming back regularly to the dentist to be able to take care of your teeth. So spinal health, I think it's you know, safe to say, has a, a extremely small public awareness. Nobody really knows about this spinal health. I'd say less than 1% of people do spinal hygiene exercises at home. Compare that to dentistry's 94% of people that brush their teeth. And did you know less than 50% of people even exercise at all? Much less actually do specific exercises for their spine. 
So because of this lack of awareness, this lack of awareness that we need to take care of our spine, statistics show that less than 5% of Americans see a chiropractor regularly. Compare that to 50% of the people that see a dentist regularly, and then no wonder our profession's where it is today. We have to increase this awareness of spinal hygiene, and that will increase the amount of people and the amount of visits um, in your office. So remember when I told you earlier and a little bit about the history of, of uh, dental hygiene and how we haven't always taken care of our teeth. In fact, in the early 1900s, right, we had terrible degeneration of, of the teeth. Most people's teeth were degenerated at an early age. That's why they were pulling on these teeth. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have an epidemic of spinal degeneration. 80% of the people in America will develop degeneration of the spine at or before the age of 60. It's an epidemic. And if you are taking x-rays or seeing x-rays in your office, you know that people are coming in like crazy with degeneration of the spine. Their spine is just rotting right there in front of you. Well, there's a reason. And dentistry did something about it. They decided to educate people about dental hygiene. Chiropractors, we have to do something about this. We've got to educate people about spinal hygiene and how to take care of their spine for a lifetime. Not only will it benefit us, our office, chiropractic in general, but it's going to, it's going to benefit the public and help eliminate this terrible cause of, of degeneration of the spine. And spinal degeneration is one of the most expensive, most uh, uh, number one causes of disability in the United States. So here's the big question. How did dentistry do it? How did dentistry build this huge awareness? Well, they got into our schools and they got into our businesses. Okay, These pictures that you're seeing here, those are pictures of me personally going to uh, middle schools and teaching children or teaching these kids how to take care of their spine, teaching them about spinal hygiene and how important their spine is and the anatomy of their spine and how it works and, and why it's... Uh, it's why you can start doing these exercises now and prevent those problems from ever happening later on. So I believe we all as chiropractors need to start doing these talks in schools. You know, at least once a year, go to an elementary school or a middle school or even a high school and teach people about spinal hygiene. Number two is getting into businesses and teaching adults about spinal hygiene. And we do this getting through the door. Uh, by doing uh, spinal safety lectures, okay? And sure, you can teach about ergonomics, you can teach about how to lift properly, but, uh, but we also teach about lifetime spinal hygiene and the exercises that you do to keep your spine healthy because we know the ultimate in spinal safety is having a healthy spine. Somebody with a healthy spine is always less likely to be injured than someone with an unhealthy spine. So in those spinal safety lectures, we're also teaching about... Uh, about spinal hygiene and I can show you and share with you uh, more on, on, the, on that later but what else did dentists do? Well obviously they teach how to brush your teeth, how to floss, how to use proper dental hygiene in their office to their patients. That's what we have to do. We have to teach how uh, you can properly take care of your spine at home as well as coming in our office regularly. And that's why I send all my patients to a website that I built called homespinalcare.com. You're welcome to use it as well. I purposefully didn't put my logo or, and I don't sell anything on this website. All it is is free information for the public so they can download the ebook. I, I, I challenge you to download that ebook and read it. Um, it talks about why we should take care of our spine and how we do that and the exercises to do that at homespinalcare.com. So, how will spinal hygiene literally explode your practice and take chiropractic to the next level? Well, I've already really explained this. Number one, it's going to make you the expert in lifetime spinal health because this person, you're teaching your patients about how to take care of their spine for a lifetime. So they're going to keep coming back to you for the information on how to take care of their spine. But this teaching them builds awareness. that, And every time they do a spinal hygiene exercise at home, they're going to have a bigger awareness on how to keep their spine healthy and that they need to keep their spine healthy. Just like every time you brush your teeth, you're building awareness and in, in that you need to take care of your teeth. So spinal hygiene is, by definition, lifetime spinal wellness. It's the same thing. If we can get these people, if we can get people of the public and more Americans to just do one exercise a day for their spine, not only will we improve their results in our office, 
but will also increase their awareness of spinal health. And if we can increase awareness of spinal health globally, or at least in our country, man, we're going to frame chiropractic as the spinal health and hygiene leader that it really is. And my vision is to see chiropractic one day we're seeing 50% of, of America and we're as large or larger than dentistry. Guys, we need to be. It's so important. It's more important to take care of your spine and to make sure your spine doesn't degenerate than it is your teeth. You can always get new teeth. You can't get a new spine. So here's the great thing about all this. Finally, as chiropractors, we agree on something, right? So there's all these different entities inside chiropractic and pre people doing different techniques and people doing having a different philosophy and you know that's fine but we all agree that you should take care of your spine and that it should stay healthy and let me share with you the three keys to spinal hygiene this is what spinal hygiene does number one we we know that the spine should be in a certain alignment okay and so spinal hygiene is going to help us to maintain that alignment it doesn't correct the alignment that's what the adjustment does Spinal hygiene helps us to maintain certain alignment. And, and I'll share with you in just a second, there is a certain alignment to the spine, whether you agree or not. Um, all the anatomy books in the world agree, and I'll share with you that in just a second. The number two key or, or principle of spinal hygiene is that the spine should move through a full range of motion in each direction. That's, that's just a given. Everybody knows that. Even in the medical field, we measure range of motion. We have discs in our spine that allow us to move. So obviously, the spine should move through a full range of motion, and that, that would uh, help indicate that the spine is healthy. Number three, the third principle, is that muscles around the spine should be strong and they should be healthy. Now that's a given too. So these three things, spinal alignment, range of motion, and strength should be maintained for a lifetime. That's all we're saying. That's spinal hygiene. We're maintaining spinal alignment, we're maintaining spinal range of motion, and we're maintaining spinal strength for a lifetime. Now, I always throw this in, let me be completely completely clear about this, okay? A lack of any of these three could indicate that you have subluxation or could be a part of the subluxation complex. And let me tell you, a subluxation should be corrected by a board-certified chiropractor in your office through the adjustment, and uh, there's no question about that. But what I'm talking about is maintenance, maintaining, and, and wellness, and, and keeping the spine in alignment and strong and moving through a range of motion after you, you correct that subluxation. So just like you can't correct a cavity by brushing it out, once you get a cavity, it doesn't matter how much you brush that cavity, it's not going to fix it. You've got to go to a dentist and you've got to get that cavity fixed. But then you continue to brush your teeth after that, don't you? You go home and you still floss, you still brush to maintain the health of your teeth. Same thing with the adjustment. Once we correct subluxation, we main, then we continue to maintain subluxation and we maintain, uh, excuse me, we maintain the health of the spine through doing spinal hygiene exercises at home. So the spinal hygiene exercises help us maintain health and prevent breakdown of the spine, prevent spinal degeneration. But those spinal hygiene exercises are not treatment, they're hygiene. So what are spinal hygiene exercises specifically? Well, let me tell you this, there are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of exercises that you could teach or that would be beneficial to the spine. We know for a fact that exercise in itself is just generally healthy for your spine. If you just exercise, it's healthy for your spine, right? Remember though, our goal here is not rehab of the spine. That's for you in your clinic. If you find specific muscle issues or subluxations or, or different things that need rehab, that's in itself, that's rehab. Spinal hygiene is not rehab. Our goal is to find exercises that are just generally or globally healthy for the spine. So, the, the, so these exercises need to help incorporate alignment, range of motion, and strength. Uh, but these exercises are good for almost every person who attempts them. You know, they must be very easy, and they've got to be quick, or people aren't going to do them. So... If, if brushing your teeth took an hour every morning, you wouldn't do it. Let's be, let's be honest here. If, if brushing your teeth took an hour, it wouldn't do it. But it takes two minutes. So we do it. We do it every morning. We do it every, every night. And that's what we have to find is a very simple, easy exercise that people can do, just like brushing their teeth every morning and night. So I want to share with you the two exercises. I'm going to share with you the first one here, which is spinal molding. 
Spinal molding is an exercise that I teach my patients to do at night before they go to bed, and it helps to maintain alignment and also helps to increase motion of the spine. Now here's where I want to share with you the, what the alignment of the spine should be. For some reason, there's some people that don't believe your spine should be in proper alignment, that when you adjust, you're actually correcting alignment. Well, let me tell you this. Every medical textbook, every anatomy book in the entire world, in any medical school, in any college that's ever taught in any, any anatomy class will tell you the exact same thing, that the spine should be straight from front to back and that the spine should not be straight from the side. That should have natural curves, a lordosis in the, in the neck and the cervical curve, a kyphosis and through the thoracic curve, and another lo, uh, lordosis through the lumbar curve. Every anatomy book in the world will tell you what the alignment of the spine is, so I don't know what the problem is there. So it, we can see here, if you're looking at the, the uh, screen with me, that on the left we have a, a healthy spine. It's in great alignment. That's straight from front to back. You can see the misalignment on the right. That's poor alignment. It's easy to see. From the side, it's even easier to see that we should have natural smooth curves. The one on the left has good alignment, nice fluid curves. The one on the right doesn't. There's hyperkyphosis of the thoracics. There's head forward posture. And that posture and that misalignment puts stress on the spine and causes degeneration. So spinal molding will help your patients hold their lateral curves between chiropractic adjustments. There's for the cervical curve and the uh, lordosis and the lumbar lordosis. So this also helps to keep the disc healthy. Um, and the disc is so important for the lateral curves. The gel material within those discs may help to maintain those lateral curves. So if you will notice if you do a lot of x-rays, if we lose disc height, a lot of times it will change, uh, either um, either decrease or increase, but it will change, the most of the time decrease, the curves from the side. So it's important that we have full fluid discs throughout the spine. Motion of the spine actually lowers the viscosity of the gel inside your disc. Now let me explain this to you. So when we move and, and we start to move those discs and we start to loosen that gel, the gel becomes what we call more fluid. It moves into a hydrogel state or a, very, or a fluid state. Lack of motion gives the gel material a higher viscosity or what we call hydrosol state or a rigid state. Now, whether you understand that or not, you've, you've experienced this yourself. This is why you feel loose after you exercise, right? So you're moving, you're jogging, you're lifting weights. After you get done, you feel loose, you feel limber. That's because you've moved those joints, you've moved those discs, and that gel material inside the disc has loosened. It's become uh, more fluid. Oppositely, you feel tight after a long car ride, or after you sleep through the night, you'll feel tighter in the morning. Um, and that's because you stay in one spot and you don't move those discs, so what happens is the gel inside the disc actually hardens slightly or moves into a more rigid state, so you feel tighter. And you might notice your patients say this, you know, I feel, why do I feel so stiff in the morning when I wake up, or why do it hurt a little bit more in the mornings when I get up and then it feels better as I move around? You know, it's because of those discs and this uh, property of that disc. So spinal molding helps to maintain these lateral curves by taking advantage of that specific property of the disc. So spinal molding is what, that's why I recommend spinal molding as a hygiene exercise to be done at night before you go to bed because generally your spine is going to be looser at the end of the day than it is in the morning just because you've been moving around all day. So let me go through the specific spinal molding instructions for you, okay? Spinal molding should be done every night before you go to bed just like you brush your teeth. That's what I tell my patients. I tell them sit on the edge of your bed or in a chair before you go to bed. Sit very straight and uh, keep a good posture and then take your chin up just a little bit. Look slightly upward. You want to raise your shoulders to 90 degrees and bend your elbows inward so that your knuckles are touching right in front of you. Okay, so you've got your elbows out and your knuckles touching right in front of you. And then you slowly twist back and forth 10 to 25 times to limber the spine. So this twisting motion, this exercise that you'll be doing, actually loosens the gel material in the disc. So they're going to do that side to side just to get that gel material a little bit more loose. And then you're going to take two foam rolls that are approximately 3 to 5 inches in diameter or two rolled towels. If you take a hand towel, you fold it in half and roll it, it will end up being about 3 to 5 inches. But you can place that towel under the low back 
and then you place the other one under the curve of the neck. So um, if you're looking at those pictures there, this is how it explains. One, one, uh, you'll lay down on your bed, you'll place one roll underneath the curve of the low back, the other roll underneath the curve of the neck, and you'll just lay on them and, that, and allow your, the curves of your spine to mold a, around those rolls. That's why it's called spinal molding, and we take advantage of that property because if you lay there for about 5 to 20 minutes, you know, I tell my patients if it hurts, you can stop, but try to make it to 20 minutes because if you can get to 20 minutes, you've been laying still for that amount of time, and the gel inside of the disc is going to harden. It's going to be, move back into a rigid state, and it'll be molded around those... Uh, those rolls slightly. Now this is not going to change your curve immediately overnight, but done consistently for a long time, for a lifetime, just like you brush your teeth, this is going to help hold those, those uh, curves in between your adjustments. So along with regular chiropractic visits, I tell my patients, this exercise will help maintain those proper curves in your spine. And I tell them, you know what, even if you only do it three to four times a week, you're doing a better job than most people who are out there doing absolutely nothing for their spine. They just expect their spine to stay healthy. How ridiculous is that? What if we never brushed our teeth, we never flossed, and just expect our, expected our teeth to stay healthy? It just wouldn't happen. So we have to start implementing these spinal hygiene exercises in the morning and, and at night. Now, another just a little tip for you to share with your patients is I, I tell them to do this. Make sure they do it while they're laying on something that's kind of soft like their bed. Um, because if they start off doing it on the floor, which is a hard surface, that can be kind of uncomfortable and really push into those curves. So I always tell them start uh, doing the spinal molding exercises laying on their bed, which is nice because they're going to be doing it right before bed anyway at night, so they can just, after they get done, pull the rolls out, throw them on the floor, go to sleep, right? Now, we just covered spinal molding, a very important spinal hygiene exercise. Um, like I said, it's most effective when done before bed at night. But next exercise I want to cover is the exercise I call spinal range of motion. I just call it the spinal range of motion exercise. So as you'll see, the spinal range of motion is most effective when done every morning after you get up. Because why? We're tighter in the morning because we've been laying there for six or eight hours sleeping in one spot. The gel material in our, in our disc is at a more rigid state. Now we're going to do our spinal range of motion exercise, and we're going to turn that hard, rigid gel into a more liquid state and get them nice and, and uh, moving and increase that range of motion. But here's the key. Are you seeing this morning and night frequency? That's by design. That's when people brush their teeth. So they're already thinking about their hygiene every morning and every night, and this is where we're going to have them also do their spinal hygiene exercises. So they just get in a routine. It's all about behavioral modification. They're going to get in a routine just like they brush their teeth of doing their spinal hygiene exercise every morning and every night. So spinal range of motion. This exercise is going to help with spinal strength and also obviously range of motion. Now there's one thing for sure, okay? The spine was made to move. And I hope none of you question this at all. Uh, obviously, if you can see the, the pictures here in front of me, on the left of your screen there, we have a femur. On the right, we have part of the spine, and you can see how we know the spine was made to move. The femur has no movement at all, no discs, no joints. It's just one solid bone. The spine is made up of 24 movable segments with flexible discs in between. If it wasn't supposed to move, it would be a femur. It would look like a femur in our back. Obviously, the spine is made to move, so uh, not only is movement important, guys, of the movement of the spine. Movement of the spine is life. It's literally life to the body. Let me share with you a quote by Roger Sperry. This guy was a 1981 Nobel Prize winner. He knows what he's doing. He, uh, a neurologist, by the way. Uh, movement of the joints, this is what he says, movement of the joints of the spine is analogous to a windmill generating electricity to run a power plant. Therefore, the more mechanically distorted a person becomes, the less energy there is for healing, metabolism, and thinking. Now that's huge. That's how important movement of the spine is. And the disc must have movement in order to maintain its health and prevent degeneration. So to prevent arthritis, to prevent decay of the spine, then we've got to keep those discs moving. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but blood flow to your disc 
is almost completely gone by the, by the end of puberty. And so what happens after puberty is those small blood vessels inside the disc um, start to break down, start to go away, and the only way the disc can receive nutrients is through a process we call imbibition. And uh, this is not debatable, by the way. This is a fact. Imbibition uh, refers to the exchange of fluids during movement, and movement creates a pumping action of the disc. So this pumping action brings in nutrients when you move your disc. It brings in nutrients such as oxygen and glucose, and it helps to expel toxins such as carbon dioxide. But if the disc is not moving, if it's fixated, then this exchange of nutrients and toxins can't happen. This process of imbibition imbib can't happen, and we get breakdown of the spine. So it's well known that misalignment and lack of motion are the number one causes of degeneration of the spine. This is why we have an, a huge epidemic of spinal degeneration in our country. Misalignment causes bone remodeling due to abnormal loading pressure, which we call Wolf's Law. This leads to calcifications and bone spurs, and this is a scientific fact. It's not debatable. Lack of motion degenerates the disc due to lack of imbibition. Okay? So, we know that the spine should move in three planes of motion. Number one, flexion and extension. Number two, lateral bending. So, lateral bending to the left, lateral bending to the right. And number three, rotation. Rotation to the right, rotation to the left. Those are the three planes of motion of the spine. In our spinal range of motion exercise, we're going to take the spine, both the neck and the back, or the low back, to the end range of motion in each one of these planes. We're going to hold each the end range of motion in each one of these planes for 10 seconds. We're going to count to 10 each time we do that. So here's what it might look like if you're looking at the pictures. We're going to start with the neck. We're going to bend our chin to our chest, hold for 10 seconds. We're going to look all the way back like we're extending the neck for 10 seconds. Then we're going to laterally bend the neck. We try to touch our ear to our left shoulder, hold it for 10 seconds. Try to touch your ear to your right shoulder, hold it for 10 seconds, and make sure they're keeping their shoulders down, not raising their shoulder up. The, then the last one, the last plane of motion for the neck is rotation. We're going to turn our neck to the right, hold for 10 seconds. Turn our neck to the left, hold for 10 seconds. No jumping or jarring or pushing. This is just a, an easy, smooth spinal range of motion exercise. Tell your patients if they start to feel dizzy or nauseated or anything at all, any symptoms, to stop, obviously. But that was the range of motion exercise for the neck. Uh, six of them, 10 seconds, each, 10 seconds each, that's 60 seconds. For the low back, we'll do the same thing. We're going to flex forward to, like we're going to touch our toes, hold for 10 seconds. Extend backwards like we're looking up, bending our spine at the ceiling. For hold that for 10 seconds. Lateral bending. We're going to put both arms down by our side. Slide our left hand down the side of our leg to touch our knee and laterally bend our spine to the left. Hold for 10 seconds. Laterally bend our spine to the right. Hold for 10 seconds. And then the last plane of motion is rotation. We're going to turn as far as we can to the left. Hold for 10 seconds. Turn as far as we can to the right. Hold for 10 seconds. So we did forward back side to side and rotation and we held it for 10 seconds at the end of that plane of motion that's six more uh, stretches that we did for 10 seconds each that's 60 seconds so really we just did the entire spinal range of motion exercise in two minutes and that's what we, they, that's why people can do it every day they can do it when they wake up in the morning because it only takes two minutes and it takes their spine through a full range of motion imagine this most people in our society haven't taken their spine through a full range of motion in over a year probably. I mean, people that don't exercise at all, they never take their spine through a full range of motion and then we sit there and wonder why we get fixations and why the spine doesn't move properly. We gotta take our spine through its full range of motion every day and we recommend that they do it every morning. So spinal range of motion, this exercise, can be done any time of the day, okay? It doesn't have to be done in the morning. It can be done multiple times throughout the day if they want to, but I always tell them it's most effective when done in the morning after you rise. And uh, that's when your spine's usually the tightest because you're, you've been inactive, you haven't moved for many hours while you sleep. So here's the key, guys. We gotta stop this epidemic of spinal degeneration and we gotta be the experts in spinal hygiene. This is why spinal education, spinal hygiene education, is so powerful and it's so powerful in your office for your patients. 
guys, we can eliminate, you know, or at least reduce the devastating effects of spinal degeneration if we'll educate our patients about spinal hygiene, about lifetime spinal wellness. Lifetime spinal wellness is number one, the chiropractic adjustment. Um, it corrects misalignment. It activates the nervous system. It's number two, you know, this process I tell my patients of spinal molding, which helps to maintain alignment and spinal curves. And it's number three, spinal range of motion, which helps to maintain motion of the spine or encourage imbibition, improve strength of the spine. So this is what I do for my patients. And this is the ideal spinal hygiene regimen I give to my patients is a weekly chiropractic adjustment or at least check. And then that the, every morning they're doing the spinal range of motion exercise and that every night they're doing the spinal molding exercise. That's going to keep their spine healthy for a lifetime. Now remember that spinal hygiene regimen has been done after they've been through a, a chiropractic corrective care plan, you know, if necessary. So sometimes they actually have to come in three times a week for so many weeks or whatever it is that they need. Uh, for to correct subluxation and get that back on where they need to be. They might even have to do specific rehab exercises of the spine that are completely different than their spinal hygiene exercises. But then once we get these things corrected, corrected as much as possible, then we're going to have them do this spinal hygiene, this spi lifetime spinal wellness plan of a weekly chiropractic adjustment. Every morning they're doing their range of motion. Every night they're doing their spinal molding. And now them and their families can live a healthy life. They can keep their spine healthy for a lifetime. We can reduce or eliminate the, the threat of, of uh, spinal degeneration in these families. So I hope that uh, this webinar or this um, lecture you know, has been powerful for you. I hope you understand and, that, and you've got some great tips out of it so far. Um, for more information on spinal hygiene, um, I'll encourage you to visit this website I made specifically for you guys who are on this webinar. It is www.spinalhygienedoctor.com slash webinar. And we do have a Spinal Hygiene Doctor membership website. Uh, usually it's $597, $597 to be a lifetime member, lifetime Spinal Hygiene Doctor member. Um, every once in a while we'll do a sale where it goes down to $397 to be a, a lifetime Spinal Hygiene Doctor member. But if you actually go to this website, spinalhygienedoctor.com slash webinar, you can uh, get the entire Spinal Hygiene Doctor membership for only $297. And that comes with everything from the Spinal Hygiene Training Modules to the Business Lecture Kit, the In-Office uh, Weekly Lecture Kit, because I do a weekly in-office workshop for my patients. It comes with the PowerPoint and everything you need there. Um, it also comes with bonuses such as my Spinal Screening Kit, Spinal, spinal Screening Poster, and all of that awesome stuff. If you want to check it out, just go there right now and you'll see everything that's in that kit and in that membership. Uh, you can go that again, www.spinalhygienedoctor.com slash webinar. But there's another special, extremely special announcement that I want to make on this webinar, and that's the GPS Summit. The GPS Summit is something that's going to be so awesome, and if you really want to grow your practice, if you want to learn how to literally explode your practice, you need to be in Austin, Texas, September 29th. This is a one-day marketing seminar. It's going to teach you how to get more new patients in your office, more new patients than you've ever got before in your office. And this is going to be September 29th in downtown Austin, Texas. And guys, there there is eight speakers that are going to be speaking, each one of them on a uh, their special um, uh, their special skills when it comes to marketing. Okay, so we have. Uh, let me just go through them for you real quick. Dr. Matthew Loop, I know you guys have heard of him. He, he's going to be speaking on social media marketing. Dr. Chris Zaino is going to be there. He's an animal. He's going to, he has the largest chiropractic office in the world. He's going to be there showing you how to grow your practice. Chris Burfield, he's going to be talking about the psychology of marketing. George Youssef, he's going to be talking about uh, marketing to medical doctors. Dr. Philip Cordova, he is going to be speaking about SEO, how to get more new patients off the internet. Dr. Cordova, he's a, a chiropractor here in Houston in my area, and my goodness, he, his office is flooded from new patients that he gets from the internet every month because he's so good at that. He's going to teach you how to do it. Dr. Rick Wren, you probably heard of him. He travels and speaks at every Parker Seminars. Uh, uh, every Parker seminar that there is around the country. He's going to be speaking about dinner workshops and getting new patients from those. Dr. Shane Hand, this guy is my mentor. He's had a huge office and he's maintained it for uh, well over a decade. He's going to show you how to keep long-term family retention. 
And then I'm fortunate enough to get to speak as well there, and I'm going to be speaking on spinal screenings, which is one of my expertise. It's how I built my practice. And so I just want to really encourage you guys to go to that seminar at the GPS Summit. And the cool thing is, if you buy your Spinal Hygiene Doctor membership for only $297, you're going to get a free ticket to the GPS Summit there in Austin, Texas, September 29th. And normally the GPS Summit, the, the one ticket to that seminar is $297, and you're getting that for free, uh, just getting your Spinal Hygiene um, Doctor membership. So again, check all that out, www.spinalhygienedoctor.com. Dot com slash webinar. I'm only going to keep that up for a couple of days, guys. Um, that uh, this offer will uh, will run out very soon, so I really challenge you to get there and do that. But that's all I have for you tonight. I really appreciate you being on the webinar, and uh, and thanks for for letting me speak, Dr. Flynn. Are you still there? Oh yes, oh yes, oh, yes. Awesome. Uh, Dr. David, thank you so much for what you guys got up there tonight. Um, and guys, as you guys know. For all you guys that have been coaching for a long time, and some of you guys are new on the line tonight, think about this. You know, we practice every day. I preach that constantly. We're in the trenches with you. Um, I'm excited for your GPS seminar. I can't wait to get down there. I'll be sitting probably in the front row. just want to learn more than anybody. Uh, because, yeah, I, most of you guys on here I coach, but you guys know I'm very big on to bring in the best experts from around the world in to learn because we bring these people in because we should be the most incredible prosperous, happy doctors out there. But if people don't know this stuff, you don't get this taught in school. And I see some of you guys' students there on the call tonight, and think about that as this. If you're a student, get there. It's worth it. You say, well, Doc, I don't have as much money right now. Do it. It doesn't matter. Trust me, you're going to get that back tenfold. Uh, you know, there's so much things that you're going to learn from these guys. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, like I said, you got some major animals there. Guys right, and if you're a student, um, contact me if you're a student, and we can uh, we can work you out an even better deal, maybe, uh, just to make sure. I think it's huge to get uh, this type of information in the hands of students. I think it, that's where we need to change chiropractic. So, fantastic, which is a great job. So, and this is the kind of programs we need. You know what we see in our schools. Trust me, it's it's not worth it. Fifty percent of the chiropractors that get out right now are failing. And it's ridiculous because more people need. Spinal hygiene, more people need what we have to offer than ever in history with what's going on today. And this is how you do it, guys. That's why I brought on Dr. Tabor Smith, because he's got something very unique. He's got something amazing. I mean, think about it. If you just got on this program a little bit, guys, and just even took how to do a spinal screen. You know, I had a, doc, I had a conversation with uh, Dr. Tabor the other day telling him, saying, listen, I was very blessed to be able to start off and have a lot of referrals and kept my practice that way for 13 years. But I actually asked him the other day, said, you know, some doc, you're going to teach me how to do a spinal screening. Because I don't know how. Honestly, guys, I don't. And so it would be, in, 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 but you know something? Something imperative to start your practice and grow your practice. And it's, it's just an amazing thing that we can do. So I encourage you, get on his website. Um, I will not only, in fact, uh, will this be posted, but will we also post his information. We're going to send an email with all of Dr. Tabor's contacts. I'll tell you right now, when Wellness Enterprises endorses this guy, you'll see a lot more of him through our program, too, also, because the more that we can offer these guys, the more we can offer these chiropractors. So when you see him on our next on our next webinar, like I said, he's, we're blessed. We're getting him at the Longevity Conference to speak to the docs on a Saturday and teach some of this stuff. So but when you see him, we're going to have him on more webinars with us. So guys, get on there, watch him. It's going to be a great time. And so, Dr. Tabor, once again, if you got anything to add, Otherwise, thank you so much for actually being on our webinar tonight or our, our the telecall tonight. And uh, God bless, and we'll talk to all of you soon. All right. Thank, thank you, sir. Bye.